Look at that. This is a daffodil. There are many different varieties of bulbs that we plant during autumn for spring flowering. Daffodils, tulips, crocus, snowdrops and a whole host of other plant varieties. Now, nurseries have grown these to swell the bulb. So it's like a little battery and right in the middle there's the flower and the leaves. So we plant these underground and then as the soil warms it initiates colour and out pops the bud as well as the foliage and it flowers. Then it goes back underground and it takes as much energy as it can to charge itself up for future years. So if you plant a single daffodil bulb they'll keep reproducing and growing year in year out. Bulbs are an investment for your garden that just keep on giving. And they're so inexpensive as well. You can buy packets of bulbs, certainly things like daffodils, you can buy whole sacks of that you plant into the ground and they continue to grow. Now let me just show you some of the different varieties. Here we have some beautiful tulips. This one is flecked, as you can see around. It's a beautiful one, it's called a Grand Perfection. And then there are other more traditional bulbs as well that you've got that give uh, a more of a reddish feeling. And of course there's also varieties like the daffodils here, hyacinths are really good too, beautiful snowdrops as well, lots of different types that you can add and garden centres are full of different varieties and, and so much for you to choose from. Now here's some hints and tips on bulbs. Firstly, how deep do you plant them? Other than having full instructions on the packet, which you should follow, a general rule of thumb is you plant a bulb three times the depth of the height of the bulb. So the bulb is this high, one, two, three. And that enables the bulb to be far enough down so squirrels can't find them and the like, and also so it can anchor itself and then it grows through the soil and flowers just up above. Another thing about planting bulbs is making sure you get them the right way up. I mean, some of them are more obvious than others. For instance, here you can see a slight coning at the top, likewise this hyacinth bulb here, and the bulbs are quite flat at the bottom, and some of them you can see roots which come out like this. So it's always best, and sometimes it's very obvious, which way up to go. Likewise with a tulip and a crocus. The tulip is obviously quite you know, flat at the base and there's a point. And with the crocus, you can see that little flexing and that flat bottom where the roots come out. And there you can almost see the beginning of a shoot coming out at the top. But things like alliums, they're not as obvious. With the alliums here, you can see a slight point just at the top. And again, a flat bottom and the roots are a bit of a giveaway. But that is a beautiful bulb. Look at the energy. Now the secret is, Size matters with bulbs. Spend a little bit more for more fuller size bulbs for a better flower. So if you were to take a look, I don't know, to give you an idea, if you saw daffodils for sale and there's about 300 of them and they're that big, or you see these ones here for sale and you get about 12 of them for the same price, go for the bigger ones. They produce the better flower. These ones may take two to three years before you produce anything, but the bigger the bulb, the better the flower. Now, a good tip when planting bulbs is to make sure that water can't get in and around them because water can rot bulbs. And unfortunately, you've got, especially with trowels, as you dig a hole, sometimes you end up with a point at the bottom rather than a, a flat bit, if you know what I mean. So when you try to push a bulb into the ground, it, it wedges itself really, and the gap at the bottom just there allows water to get in and rot the bulb. Now, here's a really good tip. The similarity between a light bulb and a flower bulb. It's just the way you put it in. A light bulb, bayonet fitting or screw fitting, you push and twist, push and twist. With a flower bulb, push and twist, push and twist. So the base of the bulb, it's the base of the soil. No water can get in, it won't rot, and it will flower perfectly. Another good tip is watching out a cheeky squirrels coming over and smelling where you've just planted bulbs, and then the soft earth where you dug them out, they find it easier to get down, and they collect the bulbs, of course, and disappear off to stash them somewhere or eat them on the spot. The secret here is to get hold of a cheese grater and a bit of soap. 
and literally grate the soap as you're planting the bulb. So effectively, you've got detergent that tastes horrible, so when the squirrel goes down, and also the perfume from the detergent will also mask where you've planted the bulbs so they don't get the scent. There are different methods of planting. Usually a bulb trowel is a bit different from a traditional trowel. Traditional trowel is quite wide at the top, there's a couple of different options there. Where bulb trowels are slightly longer and thinner, enabling you to take a core of soil out. Some of them have even got markings on so you can measure how far you're going down. Or some of them just take a literal core of soil out. You go into the ground like that, take a core of soil out, put your bulb in and then push the soil back in. And in fact, these bulb planters, there are even bigger ones, which enables you to stand upright and take core of soil out to plant a lot of bulbs relatively easily. The secret with all bulbs is making sure you've got the proper container compost. Bulb fibre has been specially formulated to add food when the bulb needs it and also there's a bit more drainage in there so it doesn't hold too much water in the container because bulbs don't like them too wet. So, it's all about planting in the ground or planting in pots but you can also produce bulbs that will flower round about Christmas time. Things like hyacinths that are, are different from normal hyacinths. And let me just explain. Some hyacinths have been specially prepared to flower indoors for Christmas time. And they're called prepared hyacinths. I kid you not. There you go. If you re you'd read on the, on the packet there, prepared for indoor growing. Now you can pop these into containers or some people actually use hyacinth glasses, which is this hourglass shape with a few indentations just in there and the bulb sits in that. You put water in the bottom, there we go, let's show you. Now you want to put enough water in so the bottom of the bulb just touches the water. So it's not actually sitting in the water but the bottom is there. So there you go. As you can see, oh look at that, perfect. That the bottom of the bulb is just touching the water. So what happens is the roots will grow in here and actually fill this whole lower section, take the energy it needs, and above here a hyacinth will grow. You have to follow the instructions. It's usually about 10 weeks, so if you start round about the end of September, beginning of October, you could have a beautiful, fragrant, flowering hyacinth in your home. But it's not just hyacinths that you can get to flower at Christmas time. Towards the end of September, beginning of October, you can plant one of these. This is an amaryllis, and you'll see these for sale in a whole host of different garden centres. And it's such a lovely plant. Look at the flower on that. This one's called Caprice. Flecks of pink with a lovely white throat to it. And it comes up on a long spike, and the flowers are just so stunning. It's marvellous to do, just for yourself, on your office desk, on your kitchen windowsill, or something to get the kids involved as well. And here's what you get. You open it up. There's this. This is in fact compost. It's just been dried and pressed. So you put it in water and it expands into the planting medium. You get the bulb as well. It's a big bulb. And you also get the pot too. So uh, I haven't got time to, uh, to um, soften that one. So I'm just using a bit of compost here. Planting them is very easy. Make sure you put some compost at the bottom. This plant itself doesn't sit underneath the soil. When you're planting this, just loosen the roots. Sits in the pot about that much, maybe a little taller. A bit more compost here. Add a bit into the bottom there. And settle it in, push the roots down, and then put the compost in and around. So you're really like tucking it into bed, I suppose, rather than pushing it hard down into the soil. There you go. So you've got the crown of, or the top of the bulb at the top here. And that's really it. It will start to generate growth and grow up. Make sure that it never sits in water. That's the key thing, because they can rot. So if they've got drainage holes, let them drain out and you can water them as they go. And, and that will grow and flower for Christmas if you're potting it up round about the last week in September first week in October. You don't have to have it to flower for Christmas. You can buy these at Christmas, they're great Christmas presents as well, to give to people 
so they can garden indoors. Well, there you have it. Autumn is nature's time for planting, certainly when it comes down to bulbs. Invest in your garden for tulips and for daffodils and crocus and snowdrops and hyacinths, or you can plant some containers indoors to give you bulb colour. And if you plant them at the right time, you also get colour for Christmas as well. Invest in your garden by putting in some spring colour bulbs to put a smile on your face next year.